Don't you just love Play-Doh? I do. It's so easy to play with and you can make it into anything that you want. And if it doesn't look like you want it to, you just squish it back together and start over again. Have you ever gone to open a can of Play-Doh and had this? Ugh. You can't do anything with that. But pick it back up and put it in the can and throw it away. But this kind of Play-Doh, it's just the best. The Bible doesn't talk about Play-Doh, but it does talk about clay. Clay is a material that's similar to Play-Doh. It's something that would have been common in Bible times. They used it to make bricks, like for building houses, or jugs, or dishes, kind of like this bowl. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah compared us to clay. In Isaiah 64, 8, he wrote, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Have you ever thought of yourself as clay? Probably not. Isaiah didn't call us rocks or jugs or bricks or a bowl. He called us clay. Have you ever seen a potter working with clay? This little bowl that I have here uh, is from last fall. I took my sons to a harvest festival and we actually got to see a potter turning his wheel. It's really cool. Why don't we see a little more about how pottery is made from this video. We're a lot like this lump of clay. Shapeless, formless, hard to use for anything. Until the potter touches it. The potter kneads and rolls and softens the clay, turning it from something hard and tough into something flexible. The potter prepares the clay to be made into something new. And slowly and surely, the clay begins to change. It submits to the potter's hands. It requires some pressure and time and patience and a plan. And the potter has all of those. The clay doesn't talk back or offer criticism. The clay simply yields to the hands of the maker. And by doing that, it becomes something beautiful. The clay is formed with purpose. It's moved, shaped, molded. And then, for a time, it sits and waits until the time is right until it's sturdy and strong enough to do the job it was made to do. And just like an artist in their clay, the Bible says we are the clay. God is the potter. We are the work of his hand. God has a plan for us, and it's good. We aren't lumps of clay. We get to be something beautiful made and loved by God. Isn't that cool? God created us to be something beautiful, something made and loved by Him. He's always molding us and shaping us to be more and more like His Son, Jesus. God teaches us. He disciplines us. He puts people and events in our lives that help shape and mold us even when bad things happen to us or to somebody close to us. He takes that and uses it. Do you think God is ever finished with us? I don't think so. I think he always wants us to be growing and changing and finding new purposes. Just 
Last month, a 99-year-old man in Great Britain decided he wanted to do a fundraiser for the healthcare industry. So he asked people to make donations and pledges for him to do a hundred laps in his garden with a walker. And through his efforts, he was able to raise over $35 million. Can you imagine what God wants to do with you? No matter if good things or bad things happen to us, God is going to take all of those situations and use them to help shape us and mold us. Sometimes a bad attitude or unwillingness or disobeying God can get in the way of what God wants to do to shape and mold us. Then we run the risk of being like this Play-Doh. Can't really do much to it, it's dried out. So the next time you see or play with Play-Doh, think about being a Play-Doh person, someone who lets God shape and mold them into the person he wants you to be so he can work in your life. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you want to shape and touch our hearts and lives. Help us to be the kind of clay that your hands can work on so that we can be more like Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Bye.